Welcome to another Melbourne Cocoa Heads presentation. Recorded December the 7th, 2011. Today we have Keith Pitt describing Vendikit, Keith's project to help improve the management of vendor libraries in Xcode. G'day everyone, um, my name is Keith Pitt and I'd like to talk to you about a tool that I wrote called Vendikit. Um, and as the subtitle says, it's dependency management for iOS and OS X. But before I get into what vendor kit does under the hood, I thought I'd explain to you what pro problem it's actually trying to solve. Um, so let me set you up with a scenario. Uh, you get to work and you're tasked with setting up a new app for the day. Uh, this app does some sort of network communication. So you're going through in your head, you're thinking, okay, I'm going to need to use a network library, but because I'm lazy, I want to use ASI HTTP request. And the data that we're going to be getting down is in a format of JSON. So we need the JSON, some sort of JSON uh, a library. A few other libraries, and you start going through the process of, of getting these set up. This is the problem that Vendikit aims to solve. <coughs> now, just cast your eyes to the screen, and you'll see this process. You start off with Google. Shit, what's that library called? ASI HTTP request, but it's got that retarded URL like all seeing eye, but the eye is spelled weirdly, so let's find it. And then, okay, I've got that, let's, let's, let's download that, that's great. Let's go to the website, um, let's find the download link, and get a drink. Let's just dr have a drink. <laughs> let's get back to work. Uh, we've downloaded the app, we need to extract it. Uh, this is the extracted files. We then need to create a folder in our project. Uh, I've just called one here called Vendor. Um, we then copy all the files in. We then have another drink. <laughs> but at this stage, I don't know. I'm looking kind of angry, I suppose. Um, let's continue the process. Uh, now we've got to drag these folders into Xcode. We need to then set up um, some targets. If you've got multiple targets, you need to make sure you check the right checkboxes. If you've got a test target, if you don't check the test target, you'll get some breakage in your test suite and you'll be like, oh, what's going on? But that's because you haven't checked the checkbox. Um, uh, you need to add frameworks. If you've got any frameworks, ASI HTTP request requires CF network, system configuration, uh, something else, something else. Um, and at this point, you're getting pretty angry because there's just so much crap you've got to deal with. Um, uh, sigh. Um, <laughs> and then you think, shit, I now I have to add JSON. Uh, so you've got to rinse this entire process. Um, I won't bore you with the details, but this is kind of what I look like <laughs> during that process. So if you've done all that and you finally got everything, you can probably finally get a build in. Um, but you know, this process takes a long time, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but Keith, but Keith, what about the billable hours? You know, I've just made like $700. Uh, yeah, that's true, but if you're, at, if you're doing a side project, you just want to get something out. You don't really care about the billable hours. Um, so that's the problem that Vendor Kit's trying to solve. That problem. It takes too effing long to get spun up in an iOS or, or Mac project, especially if you're using lots of open source libraries. Let's bring in Vendor Kit. Um, this is the tool that I wrote. With these three lines, you start off by installing the vendor gem. You, you create a vendor file. Um, this is just some bash script so I can make a slide pretty. Um, but pretty much, you're just creating a file uh, with, with one line in it called lib asi http request. And then you type vendor install. And that's all you got to do. That's about 10 seconds worth of work as opposed to the uh, seven billable hours um, that you spent before. Now, this is kind of <laughs> my face uh, at about one o'clock this afternoon after I tried this and it worked again. Um, and if you do that, you still get your successful build. It's, the processes are exactly the same and the results are exactly the same. Vendor Kit will do that entire process that I showed you before automatically for you. At the end of the day, Vendor Kit is a tool for sharing code. I feel that in the iOS uh, and the macOS communities, uh, there isn't a lot of sharing code going on. There's a lot of GitHub repos, but a lot of separate 
GitHub repos. You don't really know where to go. There's no central repository of all the good stuff put together. And that's what I'm hoping Vendor Kit will solve. Um, someone said, um, well, Oliver said, <laughs> on the, uh, the Cocoa Heads uh, mailing list, that Ruby gems, which is what I've modeled Vendor Kit after, Ruby gems is good because Ruby has lots of small libraries that solve lots of small problems. Um, whereas in the iOS industry, it's, it's kind of everyone's got this massive conglomerate toolkit. I mean, who here has got their own toolkit that they use across all their libraries? I'm pretty much going to bet that most people here do. I mean, I've got one, but it's a lot of crap. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't use it. I tend to use uh, some open source libraries. And getting set up with those libraries is just too much of a hassle. I mean, I want to do more stuff. I want to play games. I don't want to be, be getting buggerizing around with getting set up. So VendorKit does three main things. Three main, uh, it's got three main features. The first feature is the ability to create a library from a set of header, of header files, implementation files, a couple of images, a couple of bundles, a couple of static libraries, a couple of frameworks, pretty much everything that you could think would be uh, in an Xcode project or like a, an open source library, it can create a library from. Um, has anyone here ever played with Ruby gems or created a, a Ruby gem before? A few people? Cool. Well, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, Vendor Kit is written in Ruby, and all you do is you define the library in a Ruby file. This is kind of an example of what one looks like. Um, uh, don't be too scared of the syntax. Syntax is actually pretty straightforward. Um, here, we, this is the definition of my open source library. We start off with the name, with the version, uh, the authors. You can define a home page. Uh, now, the, the files line uh, is just telling the library, give me, uh, just, just use all the .h and the .m files within that class's directory. That's all that's saying. We then define a whole bunch of frameworks, and then we just define a dependency. ASI HTTP request depends on reachability, and, and that's another process you have to go through if you want to install uh, ASI HTTP requests. Actually, I think it's just for iPhone. You need to install it? I'm not sure. Um, but that's, that's the definition of, of the library. And what you can do is once you've got this definition, you can tell, ask a vendor to create you a package, a bundle. And then you can push that up to the vendor kit website and share it with everyone else. The second feature of vendor kit is, like I said, the ability to share libraries. And I built the website, um, the vendor kit website. And this lets you upload all your open source libraries that you use. Uh, I've got quite a few on there already, um, and, there's, and I've already started seeing people upload their own libraries. Uh, I think the, an Instagram library and a, and a New York Times API library were uploaded uh, just yesterday. Um, uh, I haven't got any plans to do any Instagram uh, work, but the Dasher app that was presented before had Instagram. Do you use an open source library for that? You wrote it yourself? Yeah. How long did it take you? Long enough. <laughs> exactly. And uh, would you rather have used an open source library? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, there you go. I, I probably could have saved you a bit more of uh, a bit of time if you, a bit of train time, anyway. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so this is the website that I built along with it. Um, there's got a whole bunch of documentation. You can sign up and you can start uploading. That's the only barrier to uploading is you have to sign up because if you upload porn, I want to kick you off. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Didn't think of that. That's a good point. <laughs> um, and the third feature of Vendor Kit is be able to install libraries. Now, in your project, you create what I call a vendor file, which is very similar to uh, a gem file in Bundler. You define all your open source libraries, and then you just type vendor install, and it will download them from the Vendor Kit website. It'll extract them. It'll do all it needs to do, and then directly manipulate your Xcode project and install all the files and put them all on the file system for you. And here's an example of, the, of a vendor file. Um, the first line is we're requiring this DK predicate builder version 0 0.5. Now that's really important because I find that a lot of people don't tend to version their uh, open source libraries. I don't think JSON kit even has versions, which is kind of ridiculous because I would assume it's probably one of the most used libraries in iOS because it's, it's, it's good and it's fast and it's really easy to implement. But there's no version, so you're always getting head. You're always getting master, which is, what version do you have? Uh, I have git reference 0, x, hef, uh, hj, what, what? I don't know. So I think versioning is a really positive thing to do. 
The second line, it allows you to include libraries on your local machine. If you develop your own internal library, it's kind of useful to be able to reference stuff locally, not just from a Git repo. And that's what that line does. You can see the require classes. That's pretty much just saying include all the files within the classes folder within D development DK REST. That's all that's saying. Now, the third line, that's, that's quite a bit of magic. We're pointing directly at a Git repo. Now, this particular Git repo doesn't have one of those vendor, uh, vendor spec definitions that I spoke about before. Vendor kit's actually smart enough to not require one. So you could point vendor kit at any GitHub repo, or any Git repo for that matter, and if it doesn't have a vendor spec, it'll try its hardest to get it right. Pointing at a JSON kit works just out of the box, because the vendor kit Git repo is just four files, a readme, a changelog, and a H and an M. That's all it is. And what it will do is it'll copy all those files, bring them into your Xcode project, it'll attach them to the right targets that you specify, and here's some uh, examples of choosing targets to point them to. It'll put them at the right targets, it'll add them on the file system, it'll copy them to your Xcode project, and you'll be able to compile straight off the bat. That's all you gotta do. So, in, in the essence, like in tradition of all Apple Talks, it's probably a good time to do a demo. Um, what I'm gonna show you is creating the JSON kit library, pushing it to vendor kit, and then installing it into an Xcode project. Uh, the whole process should take me not too long if, the, if, if vendor kit's as good as it says it is. Um, so let's, let's jump straight in. Let's go to JSON kit. Now, I'm gonna type vendor library in it. What this command does, oh sorry, the first thing I'm gonna do is install vendor. So I installed it. Uh, and if I've got good internet access, um, I will install the vendor gem. Um, uh, it doesn't require any particular version of Ruby and doesn't require anything else. Or, uh, ignore that error, I was dicking around in Ruby gems and I deleted a class that I probably shouldn't have. But it still works, so. Um, hey, it's fetching. Boom, there we go. All right, so that's your first step. Um, all OSX, uh, sorry, your Macs are all come with a program called Gem that lets you install that, um, so that shouldn't be an issue. All you need to type now is, is vendor library in it. And that creates a vendor spec for you. And it tries to get it right most of the time. So if I open that bad boy up, you'll see that it's pretty much created one for me. It's used the name of the folder as the name of the project, which I, I kind of figure is the right thing to do. The version, I just default it to 0 0.1. I take your git name and your git email and make that the name, uh, the author, and the default email address. The description here could be something like, uh, this is a demo, do not use. I write this because when I push the vendor kit, uh, the vendor kit Twitter account will say, hey everyone, download this new thing, uh, but I don't want them to do that because this is a demo. Uh, I can delete this, this crap because this is just some extra meta information that you can sign to your library. So I'll get rid of that. And JSON kit, it depends on JSON kit, not in this case, um, but that's just an example of how you would specify a dependency. The dependencies are other libraries on vendor kit. So, as I showed you in one of the previous slides, ASI requires reachability, which are both libraries on the site. So, I'll get rid of that. And all this does here is these back ticks are just shell commands. So, all I'm doing is I'm just listing all the files and just splitting on new lines. But to simplify that code here, I can just go uh, JSON kit.h, JSON kit.m. And that's what you gotta do. That's all you have to do to define a really basic vendor spec. Now, JSON kit doesn't actually require a vendor spec because it's so simple. But to be able to push it to the vendor kit website, you need to require one. So I'll save that. I'll type vendor library build. Uh, whoops, json kit.vendorspec, and that will create for me a vendor file. All they need to do, do now is uh, push that to uh, the website. Whoop. Now, what will actually happen now is that will break because I've just realized that JSON kit already exists, and I'm trying to push JSON kit to the website, but it already exists. So I'll just quickly not do that, and let's just pretend that that worked. 
And actually, no, I'll do it because it does work. Uh, JSON kit dot vendor spec. I'll change the name to for reels. No, I won't do that. That'll do. JSON kick test. <laughs> and I'll just uh, build it again. So I'll remove the one that I built before. Uh, vendor library uh, build and then I'll just vendor library push uh, if I get it right and this will work this time uh, so that'll that'll go out that'll take this and it will post it to the JSON kit website sorry the vendor kit website and there you go successfully push to uh, that URL. And if I was to, that's an old URL by the way. Uh, if I go to Chrome and bring that up, you'll see a nice page of everything you need to know about the library that I just pushed. There's a version, you can see it's uploaded there. You can download it and it'll even give you what you need to put in your uh, vendor file to install it. So I think that's pretty neat. I mean, this simplifies a whole bunch of stuff and the great thing about the website is that it's central. There is one location. Uh, I've got some really good plans for the Vendikit website that I'll talk about later on, but I think this is kind of cool. So the last step, so I've got creating a library down, sharing a library down. The last step is installing the library. So let's do that. Let's bring up Xcode. And when it decides to load, close it down. My nice test project. File, new project, and I will just create any old thing. Blah. I'll throw that on the desktop. So this is my blah project. Now let's close this down. Let's go to it in the terminal. Blah. Vendor init. What the vendor init does is it creates a vendor file for you with just some defaults that you can probably just blow away. Create a vendor file. Let's open that up. Change this to JSON kit. Oops. Was it JSON kig test? And what that's going to do, that's going to look at all your, all your files. It's going to figure out if JSON kig tests depends on anything else. It'll, uh, it's smart enough to know that if, let's say you require JSON kick test, and then you install another vendor library called blah. And let's say they both depend on the same library. What if they require different versions of that library? I think there's an issue with this with the Facebook uh, one where it requires, it, it bundles with a very old version of SBJSON, I think something like that, and uh, it's a pain. So what you could do then is you could define, if they both talk to the same version, Oh, sorry, if they didn't talk to the same version, vendor would still blow up and say, hey, blah requires this version, but this gem requires another version, I can't make a match. At that point, you kind of send pull requests to the owners and say, fix this, please. Because vendor kit can't solve those problems for you. So what that's done is it's downloaded it, it's installed it, and because I don't quite trust my own code yet, <laughs> it's made a backup of your project just in case. Um, but I'm pretty confident that it should all work. And you should be using source control, so you should be able to just revert back if... <laughs> I'm not really selling it to you, am I, by saying these things? <laughs> but it works, because I'll show it to you. Uh, let's open up blah.xcode project. And you'll see there's a new folder on the left called vendor. And inside this vendor folder, there will be the, the app. And then you can compile, and if all works, you get some nice errors. And we go back to my PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> what was that? Oh, it's art. Okay. It's a good segue into my next set of slides, actually. Um, uh, but it's actually not. So that was the demo. Um, right now, uh, as of uh, on the cab ride here, uh, Vendikit currently has 48 libraries. One of them is DC Introspect, which is an one of the authors here, I believe, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, I've had 400 plus downloads, so people seem to be using it, which is kind of cool. Uh, I'm really stoked about it. And 
I've had over 10,000 page views uh, since I launched the new website, which kind of blew me away because uh, I've never really done anything successful in my life. Uh, so this, is, this has been a big win for me, just, just through confidence, I think. Um, so I want to quickly talk about the future of VendorKit. Uh, when I first launched it, there were some haters all over about people just didn't like it. They just didn't really get it. Um, but I, I, I will solve these problems, and I will make you love Vendikit, whether you like it or not, Oliver. <laughs> It'll happen. You can just know it. Anyway. I've already started to like it. Oh, we, I hope you like the presentation. Uh, so the first thing I want to try and solve is static libraries. Uh, I've got some code locally, but it's not quite ready for production that will compile practically every single open source library into a static library for you. It'll create a static library of, uh, for iOS simulators, and for the iOS device, and it will merge them together, very similar to how uh, uh, GR Mustache does it. Um, it creates a, a universal binary, a universal static library. And it will do that on the fly and put that into your project, because some people don't like having a lot of scattered uh, .h and .m files across their project. VendorKit will automate that process for you. Which leads me to my next slide, ARC. What a pain in the ass you are. Uh, if we, can, if we can bundle these libraries into static libraries, we kind of avoid this whole arc problem. Because you can have whatever build settings you wanted inside your static library. You can completely separate the two, and you don't have any issues anymore. If JSON kit requires this crazy build setting, and you don't want that, you're kind of screwed at the moment. Unless you do this process yourself of compiling to a static library. Vendor kit will fix this for you. XC configs. It'll install all the configs into there if you want, and it can read from them. Uh, I've got this plan, and people want it, so I'm going to do it for you. Uh, templates. This one I'm really excited about. Uh, let's say you've, you install Kiwi or Cedar or uh, any number of different testing frameworks. The ability for these libraries to ship with a couple of templates and automatically install those templates for you inside Xcode. So you can go file, new, Cedar, spec. That's pretty, pretty easy. I mean, think about the billable hours you save. Uh, Documentation. What if these libraries could ship with documentation and automatically put it into your documentation browser? That's pretty neat. Merging. Uh, who's ever tried to uh, merge an Xcode project file and then cried? <laughs> VendorKit will solve that for you. <laughs> and that's VendorKit. <laughs> that's, that's all I've got planned. Uh, I, I did try and solve uh, like World Hunger, but it was too many lines of code. So I decided to drop that feature. Um, so that's VendorKit. I've been working pretty hard on it. Uh, it solved a lot of my problems. Uh, one thing that I wanted to quickly say is that when you're including libraries uh, in your vendor file definitions, if you included those Git repos, they can be private repos. So you can include your private repos, your, your private library, sorry, uh, and not expose it to public. You don't, you don't have to share. I encourage you to share because sharing is nice. But if you don't want to share, and that's fine if you don't. Uh, I've got actually a couple of libraries that I don't share because they're crap. Uh, <laughs> but VendorKit will help you do a lot of things. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, I hope you're pretty excited about it. My mum's excited about it. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> please download it and please enjoy VendorKit. That's it. Thank you. Do we have any uh, questions for Keith? Jesse? <laughs> you just mentioned you'd help with Xcode mergers. I did, yes. So Everyone in the room is keen on more. <laughs> so what I'm working on at the moment is inside VendorKit, there's a whole bunch of code to analyze the Xcode project. I'm currently moving that out at the moment. Um, Ray, where are you, Ray? Ray's written a gem called Xcoder. And what I'd love to do is I'd love to extract all my Xcode manipulation and passing code into his gem. So you've got this standalone gem that you can use to interact with your Xcode project. Now, what I can do is if, let's say, you get a Git, uh, a Git conflict, Git will create three files from you for this conflict. It'll create a before, an after, and like a diff version. If I can, I can analyze the first one, analyze the second one, I can get a list of files. I can quite easily do a Ruby diff, do some array magic, and determine what files are added. And I can just fix the problem for you. It's, it's, it's pretty simple. Like it's, it's, a simple, it's simple for a computer to understand, but Xcode just gets it completely wrong. And the file is too complicated for Git to understand. But with a bit of uh, a Ruby magic, I, the problem can be solved. Sounds, good. Sounds great. Sounds good. <laughs> and I'll even throw in a free set of steak knives. I won't. That's a lie. Uh, how about upgrading? So you, you 
downloaded a, a, a kit and installed it in. Yep. Is there a way a way to imagine an upgrade? So, you know, the library's been upgraded and fixes your problem that you found. Mm -hmm. you so, yep. So at the moment, the, the way you solve that is just change the version and type vendor install. What vendor will do, vendor kit will do, is it'll clean up anything it, it did to your project before the installation and then reins, reinsert the new package into it. Uh, um, Bundler has this concept of the lock file, which vendor kit doesn't currently have. But what the lock file is, is when you install a whole bunch of libraries, it'll Keep, it, it will lock down all the versions. So next time you type vendor install, it will install those same versions for you. I don't currently do that. When you just type vendor install, it will always install either head or the versions you've directly specified. Um, I'm working on vendor.lock. Uh, I don't see it as being a, a, a highest priority because there's some other cooler stuff I want to do. Uh, but that, that's how you solve that problem. Are you looking for anybody to help with this or you sort of feel like you've got it kind of, you're in the zone? No, I, I really want help because <laughs> <laughs> I was creating libraries last night and it was just a lot of work. Uh, there is another tool out there called CocoaPods. Have anyone heard of CocoaPods? Um, he kind of wants to merge with me. Uh, so I'm kind of thinking about that we may merge all our tools into one big tool. Um, but at the moment, uh, yeah, I'd love some work in Vendor Kit, especially if you want to upload and create libraries. And I really encourage you to take the libraries that you use at work, um, split them into much smaller libraries, and publish them because uh, 320 is just too big. Um, it's <laughs> well, I didn't say that because I want to work at Facebook one day, so I can't say that. <laughs> no, that's a lie. But if you split them up, because more often than not, you want to install a library, but you just want that one class. You just want that one thing. Um, Vendor Kit can help you do that now. If you specify the Git repo and then define your require statement and say classes slash this slash awesome slash library dot h that I want to use, you can do that now, but it's not that tidy. Um, yeah, if you want to create libraries and push them, feel free. If you want to doubt using it would help me and some, providing me some feedback, uh, as long as it's loveful, loving feedback. <laughs> Oh, no, nah, that's cool. Anyway, Give me hate. If you want to hate, hate it up. <laughs> We've got awesome for that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just be I provided positive criticism. No, I, I, I'm only joking. Like, it's not. I, I, I took what he said and I've actually implemented some of the things that we talked about. So it was actually pretty awesome. Right. Cool. Sorry, I just exhaust your presentation there. But You've killed my lo You killed the brand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, me thank you for that. Many thanks to Keith for presenting Vendicat. Thanks also to Itty Bitty Apps for sponsoring this month's event. You can find out more about Melbourne Cocoa Heads on the web at melbournecocoaheads.com or by following Melbourne Cocoa on Twitter.